Hi, and thanks for joining me in another program of painting with Tali, your art collection. Today we're doing part one of Rococo Princess. We're going to get started right away. As you can see, we did our charcoal drawing. Of course, um, we used our kneaded rubber eraser, which is Design, which is the brand that I use, to pick up the charcoal. It's that type that you need, and then you pick up. So that's what we did when we needed to clean up any places that we needed to clean up. And after that, we, of course, sprayed the painting with our mist and workable uh, uh, fixative from Grombacher. This is the only one that does the Tally Miracles. Okay, so it's the recipe that I use so you'd know exactly the right recipe. Uh, anyway, um, yes, we sprayed it and then we have made effects of getting any deeper lines because after you spray, your next time you put charcoal on, it's even darker, you watch my show, okay. Uh, okay, so now what we are going to do this, is in, this, this, by the way, is in the Fragonard style. He's one of my favorites from the Rococo period. Fragonard, excellent. So we're going to uh, kind of add the higher lights with some white paint. I usually do use gesso, but in this case, I didn't bring the gesso, I forgot it. So I'm gonna be improvising with uh, the white acrylic paint, which will be working uh, similar, similar, similar the same. Okay. Oh my God. Um, so as you can see, I am cleaning, cleaning. You know, there are little lines that you don't need. I'm cleaning those right here on her breast. I'm cleaning it, making it nice and clean for the effect that I need. Okay. I am right here on the little bow, little lights that will bring out my Rococo touches. Here in the background, I'm getting the texture of that tree. The performance of a brush is so, so important. This, this one is the tiny one that I'm using. And as you can see, I'm filling in all these details, the petticoat, this is a Rococo Fragonard painting, and Fragonard, uh, well, he was one of the last uh, painters of the court, the, one of the last that was painting Marie Antoinette's um, fans. So, so he did not have much of a career evolve during this period, and uh, he left to England and there he died in poverty, from what I understand. Uh, and that's too bad, you know. But Boucher, the one that was before him, uh, did have a really nice career. And I think he died during, while well, everything was still fine, you know, there wasn't the, the French Revolution going on, but Fragonard got caught in the middle of it, and so he left to England, you know, fleeing for his life, I guess, I don't know. And plus all his cl clients were, you know, being beheaded. It was a very terrible time in history where people who have care less about people who don't have. See, so I'm putting all these details, giving my Rococo touches, the petticoat. And she is dressed. They were dressing like this was a fashion going on about dressing like a, a pastora, um, uh, which is, um, what is the word in English? Um, shepherd, shepherd, shepherdess, shepherd. A shepherd girl, okay? <laughs> Shepherdess, you know, so like that was the fashion to do. And that's what Marie Antoinette would do, go around dressed as a shepherd. I mean, this was, this was like the rich dressing like peasants in this case, you know? So she's a Rococo princess. She's probably like La Delphine de France. Uh, this reminds me of that movie, um, 
that I love so much, uh, Dangerous Liaisons. And as you can see, I am adding these lights that I want. OK. I'm using the very small brush. I'm using a number two, I think, yes, a number two, to give me what I want. Uh, now, when you're, now I, I get my brush and, and clean it off on the sponge because a lot of the, the paint goes down to the, to, to the back of the brush and it's not helping much when it's there. Um, it accumulates there and you have to like kind of uh, take care of your brushes as, as, as you use your brushes. I mean, these things are expensive. Brushes are expensive. Paintings are expensive because the materials are expensive. You know, so. So that's what it is. I mean, it's expensive. People just don't understand. They think, you know, what do you do? Fart these paintings out, man? Shit. Excuse my language. Now. See, we're used to having a, a, um, a society that, that gets everything industrial-like. So, so there is very little appreciation for something that is custom-made. Or, or they, not appreciation, but they just don't have any idea of what, of what it is. I mean, it's like, you know, go to Kmart. Jacqueline, you know, Jacqueline Smith told you to go to Kmart. So everybody does that. I mean, it's, it's mass, mass product. Um, okay, what else, darling? All right. And on her face, of course, want a little bit of sunlight and these plumes that she has. What I like about making a, a painting that I'm inspired is that it comes out wonderful because it's, it's, it's a new thing, a new thing I want to do. And, and in art, you see a lot of artists uh, doing the same thing because galleries ask, ask them, we want another of that, of that, yeah, of, of you know, uh, of Bridget Bardot with a frog on her head. That sells great. So more of those, more of those, and, and then they end up, you know, getting tired of, of doing the same thing. They do other things, but galleries, they, they're just merchants, and, and it's like, what sells, that sells. And, you know, and that has to change. It really has to change, because I think people want originals more than anything. I mean, the true collector does want originals, something rare that you go to his, play, his house, and it's like rare. That's the only one ever made, you know. Originals have their, their value, I suppose. I mean, to me, they do. So, um, what else in here? Kind of cleaning up everything. I want this clean here. I can blend. I think I need a little bit more, and we are 16 minutes in the show. This is a two-part show, because I didn't, never had the opportunity before to show you the super whites. These, these are what I consider super whites. Okay? Uh, in Spanish, well, I'm achieving uh, the charo oscuro, what you would call the claro oscuro in Spanish. So yes, these tiny little lights work. And then on top of that, then we glaze. We glaze. You know, this was so, this, this, this taffeta that, you know, that, that, that taffeta that, he's, that, that the princess has here, you know, he captures it so beautifully, so beautifully. It, it's difficult to actually draw it as, as I've been practicing this today. 
I've been um, concentrated on this today, and I was I usually do you know this is on a four hour slot I I, I try to cram in uh, I try to do four shows, but um, no and I just wanted to design one today I didn't want to kill myself making you know I've made a lot of shows I mean I I think I'm gonna put some reruns okay I've been doing a lot of originals a lot of original shows and the public has been loving it. Um, because they see new ones all the time. But, um, you know, I, I guess sometimes you miss, uh, some reruns will be fine because some people may miss uh, the show they haven't seen before or whatever, you know. Uh, where are we? Okay, on that angel up there, I just want to see that I got all my whites in there because then it's going to be uh, times for it to dry up. Okay, I know my, 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 um, Clouds. I hate being the talking TV artist. I mean, really, I really do not want to talk. Do you talk when you're on a honeymoon? Do you tell your wife how many nice, soft kisses you're giving on her back? No, you're not talking. You shut up and have a good time. I hate talking. You know, the process of creation is silent. A human being takes nine months to do. But what? You know, you guys love this show because I get pissed off in the middle of it. You're crazy about it. <laughs> you know, I got to live in New York. I mean, I think I'm, I think my state of mind is very New York and it, it just not, it's not cut out for the Midwest. Unfortunately, here in the Midwest, I mean, the problem is, is that um, it's not a place for the arts. Uh, it, I mean, they talk about, oh, yeah, sure, we're supporting it. We're not a cow town. But, okay, we, they renovated a beautiful theater, and I'm very glad that, yes, they did renovate this beautiful theater. Uh, and I applaud, I applaud that. And, but it was renovated on tax-deductible dollars. So, you know, where's the sacrifice? I mean, the sacrifice in the arts is actually doing it for, for just the, for love. Like, you know, like you invest in your children's college. You did it for love. And, I mean... Uh, uh, that's how I see it. I mean, the sacrifice. So a lot of things that get done are, are because of tax-deductible interest. You know, that's, that's fine. I mean, that's okay. But uh, also, constant, uh, also, you know, I mean, there are, you know, also support the arts in, by just loving the art or, or well, hey, you know, some people buy some big screen TVs. That's a bad investment, baby. That is a bad investment. The arts, the arts. If 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 we only, if we only, I mean, what we know is about buck, about about things like sports and stuff like that. You know, that's okay too. It's entertainment. But there's a lot to know about investing in the arts. What to buy, how to buy, who not to buy, when to buy. I mean, it, it is a market out there, and very few know. I suggest, okay. This is the program where you get to know everything you wanted to, to know about art and was afraid to ask. Uh, we have 11 minutes. So I, I'm, I'm doing the parasol here. And OK, invest in an artist that is over 30 years of age. That's good. Invest in an artist uh, that's homosexual. That's a very good investment. That's a very good investment. Um, <laughs> uh, invest in an artist whose male is also, unfortunately, in, is, is a better investment. Yes. Uh, what else can I tell you how to invest? Uh, yeah, everything has an up and down market. He may be at a high price, but an artist is always winning, w willing to sell, though, though, professionally, a professional artist should never sell without an agent, never sell without an agent. You as an artist should never do that, uh, never. And also, one thing that a friend of mine, her name is, who she's an artist also, her name is Henriette Hyatt, Henriette Hyatt, and she went to school uh, with me to art school. And anyway, oh, she told me something that was so, so important. I always remember her because of it. Uh, she said, never give away a painting. They don't appreciate it. They don't appreciate anything that comes, I mean, 
you know, they just don't. You think they did, you know, because she told me she gave away, uh, she did something really cute, and it was with, with toothpicks, she told me, put it together, and she showed me, she showed me it when I was at her house, and, you know, she gave it to somebody as a gift, and then she realized, you know, they had it, like, like in a place, I mean, thrown away to a site or something, not really honored. Uh, so, so, you have to be very careful who you, if you're going to give away your art, um, you have to be very careful who you do that to. And in, in the beginning of me doing my show here, I, I, I um, you know, I didn't really value the paintings that I did here. I mean, they were just quick paintings. Uh, because, the, you know, because, of course, you know, I was doing my bigger paintings, my professional paintings, which are not selling here in this town at all because, you know, I'm in the wrong town. Um, and I'm trying, I would like to, you know, be in, in San Francisco, which I think is a good place uh, to sell art uh, f from what I went over there and, d and discovered. They do take you very serious. Some people are, are very courteous and take you very serious with what your work is. Others uh, were not very uh, courteous, and I, of course, I had to. Some art dealers, I mean, some, some art gallery owners, you know, they're very rude. Uh, one, one thing foremost that is very important about having respect for yourself as an artist, through gallery doors, two, t two types of people are going to enter, geniuses and buyers, and they are to respect you just the same. They are to respect you just the same. And uh, these are just merchants. They are not the gifted ones. All they're doing is trying to sell at a brothel Bridget Bardot's that are buck tooth because those are the ones that sell really good. So if, they, so if you bring one with, which is a redhead Bridget Bardot buck tooth, great. A brunette one, you know, a blonde one. We know that buck tooth Bridget Bardot's sell good here at our brothel. You know, so a, a gallery is, is n n nothing different as far as I'm concerned. You know, the, the creator, the creator who is the artist, should be respected. And if, you know, and, and if, it, you know, they can, they can treat you with courtesy. Nobody has the right to treat you rudely, because they do. And there was two places in San Francisco which treat me really, which treated me rude. One was a, a European art dealer. European art dealers will, will tell you, well, what are you supposed to be? Who the hell you think you are? You know, they'll, they'll just drag you on the floor and treat you like a slut. They really do. They want it. They do this because they want you at the lowest price. This is their technique to get you at the lowest price. So you have to answer them back like, you're an ignorant caveman. You don't know anything about art. Um, this person, by the way, in San Francisco, she at her, she was advertising that, you know, she has impressionist paintings. And she does not have impressionist paintings. Uh, she has impressionist style paintings. Therefore, she has not. She has no original impressionist painters. Okay, there. You know, all right. So um, she doesn't know that. But her name, the, the kind of ad, the kind of advertising, the kind of uh, outside slogan that she has out there, brings people in. Uh, but it is false advertising. And so I called her up and told her that. You know, I represent it. Uh, I mean, I represent as an artist. I also am associated with. Uh, Art College Associ I mean, the College Art Association, and I just don't think that's right. I mean, because you know, you're you're uh, pro you're really prostituting the concept of a form of art, and it's not right. So let's just get the record straight. So here you are, a pig that does not know anything. Let's just put you straight here, okay? Because you're the one that doesn't have an education. I do. So you got you got to be this way because this is how Picasso, this is how Picasso, got himself. Respect it. Apart from the fact that you know he abused these poor women all the time, and they would see like how they were so stupid over him. You know, um, that 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 was that was to his credit, to his dominance. But he Picasso was really a, a very um, self-centered uh, jerk. Picasso Picasso was not a nice person, really. He was really was not a nice person. But. I, uh, all of my respect goes out to Picasso because he was the most, he, he, he survived and was so respected on his own. He didn't, have a, he, didn't have, he didn't need a woman to clean his butt like uh, Gala did with, um, with Salvador Dali. After Gala died, Salvador Dali didn't know where the hell he was standing or where was he. He didn't know anything. He didn't know who had to get paid, who did, nothing. 
Salvador Dali was totally protected and taken care of by Gala. As soon as Gala left, forget it. He went down here from downhill from that, from there. The king of uh, uh, the king of of of, 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 of um, Spain was the one that was like his friend and and helped bail him out and stuff. Like, where in the hell is Dolly? What's he up to? You know? And oh, what? He's living in a cave. What the hell is? You know? Whatever. Okay. Whatever. You get to know kings and stuff like that. But they. Uh, Gala was the mastermind. When they were when they were low in money, she would triple, she would double the tips when she go. She was just great, great in bluffing at the, at the at the marketing game. Fabulous, fabulous. That's 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 what you need to do. That's what you need to be now. Picasso did it on his own alone. So I respect Picasso for that. I particularly don't think that he was a, ge a great genius in what he made as art. But I think he was a genius in, other, in, in how he manipulated his art to be worth so much in his own time to become a millionaire with his art. I celebrate him in that. And also Andy Warhol, which has that, you got to have that Machiavellic. You, you got to be, you got to be calculating. I don't know. I guess you do. Cold and calculus. And cal I, I don't have words right now, sweetie. Do not have words in my head. We got three minutes. Okay, I did this all with a really thin brush. I mean, it's working very well for me. Been talking like a crazy man. As we say in Venezuela, como un loco pa no ba bañarse. Eh? Talking more than a crazy person to not take a shower. <laughs> well, that's what they say in this little town where I was born. I was born in Carupano. Oh, by the way, t yesterday I faxed Miss Car uh, Mrs. Herrera, Carolina Herrera, the designer. Um, I couldn't get through to her talking English, so I decided to talk Spanish. As soon as I, as soon as I spoke Spanish to, to them, they're like, immediately got me somebody there who probably helps her out. But uh, I want to be, do, be probably doing her portrait. I hope she gets my call back. Uh, I mean, I announced that, so. So. So I met her in San Francisco for the second time. Do we have everything we want, darling? We got two minutes. See, after, see these dots, these little dots. Oh, 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 OK, hold on. These little dots of white, I don't want to talk. I do not want to talk. I don't want to talk. Um, I don't want to talk. Just look, OK, baby? You just look. I got one minute. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm getting these, this foliage, this very type of Rococo foliage in the Fragonard style. And on our second show, our next show, we will be coloring this in. We're going to let it, okay, this will be ready to be colored in. And remember, darlings, it's just going to be me the canvas, the cameras, and all you wonderful people out there in the suburbs. This is Tali, signing off. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMels.
Hi, and thanks for joining me in another program of painting with Tali, your art collection. This is Rococo Princess Part 2, and we are going to apply some colors because we just finished applying all the whites that we wanted to apply, and now we're going to be glazing over that. And let's get started immediately right away. All right, so her umbrella is a sort of yellow. A nice bright yellow. I got the perfect Rococo yellow here. Fabulous. You know, in those days, they uh, used to mix their paints and, and they grind the pigments. You know, they were practically scientists. An artist was very much of a scientist, very much of a chemist. Now we have them already set. I mean, all, all, all made. So, we're going to get in that yellow. And when you see these originals, I, I haven't seen these originals. I mean, I haven't. I mean, I've seen some a few uh, Fragonard's work because this is Fragonard, and he was the son of a glove maker. He was born in Grasse, 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 France, where they do the perfumes. Okay, so we are glazing. I like working with yellow. Yellow is a great color to work with. when you're glazing. Glazing with yellow is, there's nothing better in life than glazing with yellow in acrylic paint. I don't know anything about oils because I have never, I mean, one time I got an oil set from my friend David Chi, he's an artist, in Laguna Beach, not in Laguna Beach, he is in uh, Hermosa Beach, California. And I'm looking forward to giving him a visit I sent him some copies of my shows, and he hadn't even he didn't have time to look at them. He's been very busy, I guess. So here we are with that yellow on that. All right, what else do we need? Um, let's go with the blues and greens. But well, since we're in yellow, I need that uh, kind of some reddish, 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 reddish. I'm going to go, go with the round brush. I need a reddish on, because she has a red type of pink. That's so beautiful. This Fragonard, the, the model of this is a Fragonard, and oh, I call, it's called, it's in the Wallace Collection. The Wallace Collection has two Fragonards. Uh, the Musical Contest is what this one's, you know, I, from a sample. Uh, it, it's modeled from the, that, that one, the Musical Contest or something. I'd love to see some original Fragonards. Uh, here in town, uh, where, where I live here in Columbus, for you people who live here in Columbus and watching the show, um, there is a Fragonard in our, in our museum, Columbus Museum of Fine Art. And, uh, but the better example of Rococo painting of the period is the Boucher. That's going to be there at the museum, the Boucher. There's only one Boucher. It's a complete painting. Okay, let's see how that looks. Very, very strong, the tonality. Do not want that strong of a tonality. Let's mix it in with some yellow. Let's make it more watery. Yeah. This seems to be doing the work, the job, right here. We're glazing over it. Let's see how it does with the um, Blending here, blending. Puts it pretty light, doesn't it? But blends it in well into the pigment. So 
see also, oh, the bodice. Okay. My white paint that is under here will flourish out, as you can see. I have a lot of pigment floating, so it's like a lake of pigment, which I'm moving down. So my effects of the drapery is coming through because I already did my white on top. I mean, I did my white detailings. <laughs> I have been many years painting. Many, many years. There's something about that there. There's here. Nice brush here. Nice brush, giving me a very good tooth and point as I continue here. You know, the show has been doing well in Miami. And um, for those of you, uh, my voicemail is 470-2659. Um, you, you, if you like the show uh, and you have a nice comment that you noticed it, liked it, call in and leave that because that's what I show to or have them listen to in other places when I need to prove to them, look, it's a successful show here in Columbus, Ohio, where I produce the show. Thank you to Michael Flood, who also is, is the one. There wouldn't be any Tali show if it wasn't for Michael Flood. So um, if ever you meet a Michael Flood, just ask him, are you the one responsible for the Tali show? And he'll say, yes, I'm the one that helps him do the show and okay so um, so you fans out there the people who like the show uh, you have a lot to thank Michael also as I do now like now getting back to this um, see how my transparencies are there okay This is very orange. Okay, we're just feeling up the detail here about it. The detail there about it. Okay. Now let's see how it looks when we blend. Okay, when we blend it here, we, we messed up. We didn't want that. We didn't want that there. We're just cleaning, cleaning, cleaning there. Okay. Beautiful when blended. Yeah, bringing out my drapery. Mm-hmm. Except since the brush is so big and fat, I mean, since this, um, um, this thing is so big and fat, you know, I'm, I'm not having much control in precision where I'm not supposed to, be, you know, mess in and mess out. Okay, so. Got to think of better tools here to use. Ugh. Is that better? Anyway. Oh, okay, we're 200 years here. We got 17 minutes left. We got to do this whole damn thing. Well, I don't care. You know, I'm not killing myself anymore in half hour paintings, all right? Um, I'm calmly doing it, what I want to do, and maybe if it's a third part, we'll doing a third part. It's a fourth part, fifth part, whatever. I mean, because here you get the, you get really down to noticing what, what you do, what you don't do, how you do it. All right, 200 years on that shit. 
Okay. Um, where are we? Where were we? Huh? Okay. What are we doing? Um, uh, all right. Uh, some petticoat stuff. Whatever we want. It, what violet something? Um, look at some brown. Let's get some brown on that petticoat. Uh, some kind of brown and blue about it. Okay, some kind of brown here. Uh. Okay, this is burnt sienna. Oh, since we're on this burnt sienna, I might as well do the skin. Okay? Since we're on the burnt sienna, we're doing the skin here. Fabulous. There you go. And on her hand, you know what? Her hand, I gotta get some white. It got painted over, and it's not too juicy enough, it's too dry. Okay. Her little finger. Now it's really like real wet, and you did it too wet, it, you're not really happy. You dry, pick up. Oh, oh. It needs a, you need to be a genius to do one of these TV shows. So, uh, you know, I'm conceited. I mean, if you have the endowment, go get the ruler. The numbers don't lie. Okay, I want that hand there. Okay, that's going to do just fine. Oh, uh, okay. I'm going with white. I don't want to talk. I do not want to talk. I really don't want to talk. I don't want to talk. Okay. Okay. Uh huh. Give a tint here in the skin. There are these stores that are called uh, Limited Express, that they're around the country. I've seen one in San Francisco. And they have a lot of these Rococo type of paintings uh, made into murals. They got beautiful painting work around the store, which I find interesting. A little bit of white here at the wrist. Uh, can't notice it. Okay. All right. Um, uh, she has some white box. She has white socks on. So we're gonna let that dry. Um, let's go with the blues. I don't have any space to put. This is a this is a tiny little tray table where I have everything on here. Um, God gives bread to whom has no teeth, and I'm pissed off about it really. Um, let's go here. I mean, you see these people with money who have no talent. 
All I got is money. Some blue, some blue. Screwing it back on, it's a bitch. It is a bitch. Okay. Okay. What are we doing? Uh, isn't that pretty? Do you like that? Okay. Oh, that's nice. So general. Mm -hmm. Nice general color for back there. Yeah. It's time for that deep voice. I forgot that uh, a lot of fans out there like that deep masculine voice. So as you can see, we are trying to fill in the rest of this and uh, getting that deep type of soft Rococo color there for you. That's going to be very interesting there. And uh, just get some more water because we need it to be uh, kind, of, uh, kind of watery to later on uh, get this uh, pigment uh, well spread. Right. Oh, hold on. Okay. Okay. This is behind her, see? As you can see, we're glazing in the color. Okay, it is very pronounced right now. So, okay, we took some of it off. It was a clean sponge. I don't want to talk. Beautiful, beautiful color here. Beautiful filtering here, see? Beautiful filtering. Yeah, I really want you to enjoy the Tali show, you know, so you can see the techniques. I mean, sure, I can do a painting in a half hour and scream and, and go absolutely crazy. I mean, you know, but I, I stopped doing that. I don't think you benefit much as learning. I mean, you get a great comedian going, out at, going haywire, but, you know, it's not really what I'm about. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful, yes. Yes, very Rococo. Very, the effects of Rococo. Are, I mean, this is just an incredible technique. Just a fabulous technique. You get to do anything you want with it. Now we're going to get in some, some greens, a little bit of yellows, because this area has that. This is more of a green-yellow area here, baby. Yeah. So since your glazes are, I mean, I don't want to talk. I do, I don't want to talk. I really don't want to talk. There's so much, it's, this is so comp, this is, there's so much to, it's just too much. It's, 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 it's too much. Just watch. It's, it's too much. It is too much. It is. It's too much. It's hard on me. Now that I've created a lot of fame, I don't have to kill myself that much. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Uh 
Uh huh. And 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 it's up there more yellow. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Very calmly doing a Tali painting here. Very calmly. We're not finishing it today. We're going to have a part three. Okay? Because I feel like it. I give the orders around here. It's my show. Okay. Okay. Beautiful, just just beautiful. So nice and calm and tranquil, you know? It is a wonderful thing to paint. Yeah, the effects of trees or whatever. But, but that's going to be like, actually, I have, I have clouds planned for that area. Clouds. So since we're on the greens, um, and plus, right here we need blue because that's a, a sky break, a blue sky break there. I don't, blue sky break. What the hell do I mean by that? Um, we're still on background garden color. Um, what are we doing with this? What, what, what's that supposed to be? Gray stone something. Okay. Some purpleness about it, baby. Yes. Because we don't know what the hell it is. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay, this is beautiful. Worked out very well, very quickly, done nicely, yes, fabulous. But I think it might look better when it is smudged. Yes, sir. Beautiful. And, you know that drapery thing, now that I look at it, it looks like poop. Um, I can't do anything about it. Not right now, I don't want to. Um, okay, some brown here or something. Okay, okay, bushes, nice. Natural color of bushes, yes, yes, yes. Bushes, 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 bushes. And we got three minutes. Um, more different types of bushes. Get a yellow, more a, a more of a yellow tint here on these bushes here and up there, and. Yellow here, like that's lawn, some lawn. I don't want to talk. Okay, I don't like this, so it's going out. We're going with clean up. We're going, yeah, with that. We got two minutes. Uh-huh. Purpleness, sweetie. Purpleness to save the day. We need some depthness. Some depth or something about it. Purple has to come in somehow with the situation. 
Okay. One minute. Even here, purple has, purpleness has to come in with the situation there, too. Purpleness there. Purpleness, purpleness generally. Fabulous doing the trick. Now we need more deepness here, more deepness there. Uh huh, uh huh. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Fabulous, yes. Dab it, dab it, dab it. It's all effects. And. Oh, yeah, kind of like purple about this a little bit in some places. But then, greenery in others. Yes. Greenery in other places. I'll give you what you want. Purpleness here, somewhere, somewhere, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, greenery again, baby. Oh. Have to go. And remember, darlings, it's just going to be me, you, the canvas, the cameras, and all you wonderful people out there in the suburbs. This is Tolly signing off. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMille's.